Hello there and welcome to episode 6 of Colonization Project. What you can see we are doing right now is launching a space station that is going to go in orbit around Kerbin. We are launching this on a Cyrenus Block 2. It definitely doesn't look like anything that's in real life. It's definitely not inspired by the Falcon 9. Definitely not. And it's definitely not going to land on a drone ship um, in, a, in a couple minutes. But yeah, we are launching a space station that's going to go into orbit around Kerbin, and that's about all it's going to do. It, <laughs> um, it's not going to produce us very much science, and I only did it to complete a contract, and that's about it. Um, you did see um, right here, I did turn on cheats just for a second, just because... There was a glitch where the solar panels kept breaking. That didn't fix it, but thankfully two of the solar panels still survived. And thankfully they are symmetric, and that's good. But now that that's in orbit, what we can do now is deorbit the second stage because we don't want to leave any space junk in orbit. And then we can reuse the first stage because the first stage is quite expensive and we want to recover it. But we're too far downrange to, an, to do a return to launch site, so we're going to land on a boat in the middle of the ocean because that's efficient. Um, at least in this case. There are a couple cases where return to launch sites are more efficient, but this is not one of those, so we want to land on a drone ship. Um, if you if you do notice, I don't have any MechJab or Booster Guidance Windows up or KOS installed, so I'm doing this 100% manually, and I've done RTLS landings manually before, and those are quite easy uh, compared to drone ship landings. So this actually took a few attempts to get right, but I th I think the result came out okay after a couple quick save reverts. Um, we do manage to land on the drone ship. Um, almost perfectly, actually. That was like a perfect hover slam right there. Um, but we can now launch the same booster for the second time. And this is carrying a an inflatable habitation module, some material kits, and I think some supplies to go along with it. Because, you know, you know, we don't want the Kerbals to starve to death up there. Another thing you may notice, it's been, um, it's been like a week since the last episode. Um, I know I did put out two videos on the same day, but it, um, yeah, I've sort of been playing Kerbal Space Program all week, and I now have a lot of footage that I need to get through. So what you're seeing now was actually recorded like a week ago. The main cause for this, I could have had a video out last week, early last week, but Blender decided to release an update. I, I, I use Blender for video editing and it completely broke the speed control function of the editor. If you're looking at any of my videos, you can tell they're speed up, sped up by four times regular speed, and it's kind of hard to make a colonization project episode if you can't speed things up, because then it gets kind of boring. You either don't see everything, or um, you get like a um, couple hour long footages of um, footage, I guess. Footages. That, that's not a word. Videos. <laughs> I, j I just forgot the word for a video there. I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm, I'm not even sure anymore. Um, but we are now reusing the booster. Uh, not a perfect hover slam this time. Um, but it, but it was a very accurate landing, landing almost exactly in the middle of the drone ship. Um, the drone ship is actually called Funny It Worked Last Time, which is, it's 
quite funny if um yeah um anyways um we've landed and can now move back to the main mission which is docking this module with the space station uh not much to talk about here we've docked i think like uh, I, I don't even want to know how many modules we've docked together in this series because we've done hmm we've done the first one which was our rendezvous contract and then we've I don't even know um but we have arrived at the space station we can now um detach the second stage and uh just use the RCS to guide it in. Um, yeah, there's not that much to talk about here. It's just a standard docking procedure. Um, I decided to dock it to the side because I thought, why not? It it would be kind of long if it didn't, and you know, you want to give the space station some like some dimensions and you don't want it just to be like a long stick and floating in space. Um, you might want it for the for like interplanetary missions, but uh, th this space station is not designed to go interplanetary. Uh, what you're seeing right now, I just re uh, tried to follow the first stage, second not first stage, uh, second stage all the way down to its inevitable crashing into the surface because I thought. Why not? Uh, now what we're doing is launching the crew of the station on the same rocket. <laughs> Actually, I think this is the only rocket that we launch in this episode. Um, yeah, because it's a really good rocket. Uh, it, we can reuse the first stage, which means that it can fly like every couple days, like every week or so. And we can also, wait a minute, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, it can also carry some sizable payloads into orbit and beyond orbit, in fact, because some, we're actually going to be sending a minimus space station later in this episode. Uh, but I'll talk more about that later. Because that is not what we're doing now. What we are doing now is recovering the booster for the third time. Um, you may see that I'm actually uh, quick saving, quick saving, and reverting quite a bit because at this point I still haven't gotten the hang of booster recovery on a drone ship, but. Um, in, um, in future episodes, I, I won't actually allow myself to quick save revert because, you know, it's not very, it's not very cool if everything goes right, because then you don't get to see the explosions. Um, I actually had a, when I did a quick save revert, I... I actually had one failure that um, went down on a drone ship so hard that not only the booster, but the drone ship blew up, um, which was surprising. I was not expecting that, but yeah, <laughs> so that might happen in the future, but I also have gotten a bit better at booster recovery, so um you know, we, we might have a booster failure in the future, but that won't be for a couple episodes because, um, yeah, I, um, yeah, I still need to get through like six episodes worth of footage. I still need to edit it all together and then I need, and then I need to record the post commentary for it. And then we'll, <laughs> I'm, it doesn't take me very long to edit the videos. Editing the videos probably takes me like an hour to 30 minutes. So, not very long. 
Recording the post commentary, I think, is the hardest part because it takes. Actually, wait, no, it doesn't. It takes like 40 minutes to record a post comment. Re record a post commentary? Re record post commentary for one of my videos. And then recording, it takes the longest time because I speed up my videos by four times. And that doesn't count the quick save reverts and all that. So it, for every one hour of footage, um, for, for, for more than that, actually, it basically means I get 25 minutes of video. No, that's not right. Um, uh, I can't do math in my head right now. Um, it, it, it's not even a full colonization project episode. So I need a lot of footage, but also recording the footage is quite fun because I'm playing Kerbal Space Program and that's a really fun game. It, other, otherwise I wouldn't be making Kerbal Space Program content. Um... But, uh, um, on to the mission at hand. We have docked the crew to the space station, and we can inflate that little hab habitation module. It's, I chose the inflatable module because it's, um, it can store a lot of kerbals, which means the kerbals have a lot of room to stretch their legs. And, you know, inflatable modules are cool. Um, but I thought, but at this point I thought, how about how about we get all three of our kerbals out in EVA? Oh, I also forgot to mention the uh, kerbals that were that are the first crew to visit this space station. Um, yes, the original three: Jeb, Bill, and Bob. Um, we, we carried a bunch of uh, EVA things with us. Um, we carried some experimental science kits we carried um a couple uh what are they called repair repair kits to repair the solar panels and i think that's about it uh so we can now repair the solar panels and bring the space station back to its maximum energy capacity um we also brought along four more solar panels in case what uh that didn't work but we can attach them anyway because um, what else would they be doing? They would just be in that uh, uh, crew spacecraft uh, trunk until they eventually just burn up in the atmosphere. And you know, we might we we might as well um, carry along a few extra solar panels. It, it really doesn't hurt to have more than enough. Um, I, I did get Bill back into the space station, but um, yeah, I tried to move a part on the space station, and then the entire space station just exploded. It just ceased to exist. Um, so I just re reverted a quick save, and we didn't really do anything after that. So I decided that's where, that that's just where we're gonna cut the footage. Um, but now what we're doing is launching the Minimus space station or I call it the Minimus Orbital Outpost. Um, because I didn't really have a better name to put, better name for it. Uh, you may be wondering why we are launching the Minimus Space Station first and not the Lunar Gateway. Because in the last series, if you watch that, I don't recommend watching that because the quality of the those videos are absolutely terrible. Um, we actually launched a moon or gateway first and you know that seems like uh what what you should do because the mine is closer than minimus and um hmm, uh it, so the video just sort of skipped back there but the mine is closer than min the mine is closer than minimus is and um, yeah, it's closer, but min <coughs> oh, um, Minimus actually has lower surface gravity, and, um, I actually like it a lot more than a mun, and, than the mun, and, 
Um, yeah, the I don't really. Um, <laughs> after what happened with um, our first Mun mission, Crude Mun mission. Yeah, I don't want the same thing happening again, where we barely have enough fuel to do what we're uh, to do to do the landing. But Minimus, on the other hand, it it doesn't take very much delta V to get to. Actually, it takes more delta V to get to, but it takes less delta V to orbit, uh, get back, land, ascend. Overall, it's just a better planet. <laughs> it also has the flats. So I think this is where we're going to focus our infrastructure first. Um, because Minimus is a lot more friendly to colonization than the Mun. The Mun has higher surface gravity. It's... Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a lot harder to land on. But Minimus, it has the nice flats. It has... Um, doesn't require much delta v. You can be, you can generally be a lot more creative with minimus bases than you can be with mun bases, because mun bases are largely, largely limited by size. Because you don't want to really be landing a giant spacecraft on the on the surface of the mun. But you will be doing that eventually. Um, minimus is, yeah, it's just a lot more friendly to colonization. Also, we get more science from orbiting around it from the science labs, so I see this as an absolute win. Um, we are now getting to orbit. You may notice that the orbit is actually re in a retrograde orbit, but I'll fix that in the next episode. Um, what we're doing now is just deorbiting the second stage. Actually, I think it's going to be in the next episode. I'm not sure. Uh, but we can deorbit the second stage, and that will actually be the end of this episode. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Wait a minute. Uh, um, the, uh, uh, <laughs> um, I actually thought that was the end of the episode, because I edited this, like, five days ago. Actually, not five days ago. I don't even know how long ago I edited it edited this video. <laughs> I don't even know how long ago I edited it at the I edited this a while ago <laughs> so I actually thought that was the end of the video but it is not <laughs> um, uh, what we're doing now is launching the uh, science lab for the minimus outpost um, yeah, that, that that was strange. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I didn't think that the Sarnus booster had enough delta V to get the entire station out to Minimus. So we're just launching the core and the science module in uh, in separate launches. Um. It probably had enough Delta V to do it, but I didn't want to take the risk. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm launching it in two parts rather than one part, like I did with the uh, Kerbin Space Station. I actually renamed the Kerbin Space Station to Space Lab because it sort of sounds like Skylab, but which was the, I believe, the first permanent no it wasn't it was the first united states space station yeah and you know it's not in the sky it's in space so let's call it space lab um i'm actually not sure what the purpose of space lab is because i originally built it to um complete the contract and get us some science, but as it turns out, um, we don't get a lot of science from Space Lab. We get like one science per day, and that's not a lot. Uh, it, but I do have a couple ideas for it in the future. It's 
it could serve as a orbital construction dock where we will construct where we will construct uh, spacecraft that are too big to be launched from Kerbin. We could also it could also be a space hotel because um, what's not what what's stopping us from sending tourists up there? And, and it could also be a refueling depot for for spacecraft um, that need refueling. So, yeah, it could have a lot of uses, but it's definitely not for scientific purposes. Well, I mean, it could be used for scientific purposes because we would be testing out new things like orbital, orbital construction, but other than that, it's quite useless <laughs> because it's not a science space station. But this is designed to be a sci science space station, and, and coming from the future, it actually gets us a whole lot of science. Um, and you know, space stations are cool. We can't. We, 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 it's hard to colonize planets without without infrastructure, and this is infrastructure right here, I think. Um, but we um can rendezvous the two spacecraft together. Uh, you may notice that I'm leaving the second stage attached. And this is because of the fact that we're still in a retrograde orbit and we want to reverse that retrograde orbit. So we're going in a prograde orbit instead because we don't want to be in a retrograde orbit. So we have a bit of extra fuel. So I thought, why, why not just use it to reverse my orbit? And that's exactly what I did. Um, the orbit is also kind of inclined. So we plot out a quick inclination change to change that up. And for some reason, I put our first Minimus orbiter into a retrograde orbit too. And they have very similar orbits. This, the Minimus orbiter and the space station. And they actually end up getting like within three kilometers of each other. And that kind of worries me because they're traveling in retrograde orbit, so they have a lot of relative velocity. Um, so I'm just hoping that they don't collide. But we're now re we deorbited the second stage because it completed its mission, and we can now uh, dock the two spacecraft again together. But that'll actually be the end of the episode actually this time. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.